different businesses, uh, sorry, 30 businesses, and I've employed more than 1,000 staff. And I typically will work with people that are time poor and cash flow challenged. We also have an incubator where we help people out and we can do all this for as little as $50 a month. Now, uh, Tala, could I just please get that handout given to everyone, please? It's um, in my bag up here in a folder. Sorry about this, guys. I thought I was on at 12.30, not 12 o'clock. So that's a little bit about me. A um, Couple of questions. Uh, who here could survive in their business without them being there for one month? Could you put your hand up, please, for one month? Who could survive in business without them being there for one month? Nobody? That's not good. This is not going to plan. Because I was going to say then three months, and then six months, and then 12 months. Let me tell you a little story of what happened to me in 2015. I couldn't work for the entire year. Now, I've got a number of companies. They're under management. They're cash flow positive. It's very systemic, obviously. And the thing is, my mother and father got sick. And so I had to look after them. They ultimately both passed away. But my company had to pay me, it had to pay for all those expenses to do with my folks, and the impact of me not being there obviously was something in terms of the cash flow with the business. So the idea is to make it so that you're not working 80, 100 hour weeks and have positive cash flow that allows you to have contingencies in place so that God forbid something happens to you like what happened to me, you can continue to run your business. Okay, so that's very important. In terms of metrics, there's hundreds of different KPIs. It's very important you don't get bogged down and that you focus just on the ones that are relevant to you. If you monitor just P&L, that won't work because profit is not cash. So monitoring, if you will, your revenue, less your expenses, is very, very old school. What I would recommend to you to do, and just bear in mind, you cannot manage what you don't measure, okay, is to measure your revenue variables. There are five primary revenue variables. I'm going to go through those with you, okay? Before I do that, I want to give you a quick case study of what not to do of a business that I started in the 80s. This was 1983 to 1989, and you can see that this has exponential growth. That curve on the bottom is the profitability of the business. Note what happens. It goes from 20,000 in the first year to 1 million plus by year six, and I didn't make a cracker until we had to have the recession we had to have. Thank you very much, Paul Keating, not. My turnover, dropped by 70% in six months. I had to close two shops, let 12 staff go, and restart the business, basically from home, with just my father and myself, and look what happened. I regrew the business back to $600,000 by year three, and got $200,000 profit on the bottom. So with all the lessons that I learned from the 80s by implementing them back into the business, with that profitability, I started two new companies at the same time, which turned into $20 million businesses, which are still going today, 25 years later. So here's the kicker. Focus on cash and cash flow. Don't focus on revenue, okay? Now, if we look at the revenue calculator, which you've got on the back of your handout, okay? If you just turn over onto the back, you'll see there should be a, a funnel that looks like that, okay? Here's the thing. Now, there are no strategies to find customers. Do you know why I said that? There's only strategies to find leads. And then it's our job through our process sales process, conversion, persuasion, negotiating, whatever, to turn those leads into customers. Make sense? Now, 
If you multiply the number of customers by the impact experience and your post-purchase uh, after follow-up sales service, you then end up with your revenue, multiply it by your margin, you get your GP. Now what I would ask you to do, and take away your expenses of course, you'll end up with your net profit. So the top five is what I'm talking about at the moment. Now, it's very important that you do measure your conversion rate in the sales process, okay? So, if you play with those on your calculator, as in you put that into your calculator, the uh, metrics on those variables, just tweak them two to three percent plus, and I want you to visualize what impact that's gonna have on your bottom line, okay? Now, here's the thing. If you increase each one of those by 10%, those five variables, that will improve your GP by 61%. If you were to improve them by 15%, you'll double your GP. They say it can't be done. But I've done this three times in seven companies that I've founded where they have gone up by more than 100% and the net result on GP is 3,200% improvement, okay? So, that's leverage for you. Now, let's put some numbers around that profit calculator. Imagine that it's got 100 leads a week, that's a lot, I know. And it's a business turning over 780,000 bucks and it's making 23,000 on the bottom. Is that reasonable? It's not good, not good profit, but it's better than a poke in the eye with a blunt stick. Very typical of a small business, and many businesses struggle to get above a million in revenue, okay? So let's just go around. Oh, by the way, obviously what I said before, it's much easier to improve your conversion rate and sell more that way, and a lot cheaper than what it is to go out there and find the money to get leads, as opposed to selling more to the people you're already dealing with. So, let's change things up and mix it up. One of my clients was a TAB. Out of 1,500 tabs, they were rated at 1,200. So what we did, they opened up two hours earlier and capitalised on the bets from the United States and the GP from those two hours, which was a distinct point of difference between their TAB and other TABs, was equal to the rest of the trading day. They went to top 10, they refined their processes, they then got a second TAB, they implemented them there, they got a third TAB, now they got a three-storey house in the Shire with a $100,000 Commodore, gold plated, happy days, cash flow sorted. So it doesn't take much to make these changes, okay? So, here's the thing. Do you have a growth issue in your business or do you have a cash flow issue. Now most people, and, and I'll ask the question, but I, I, I don't think everyone's going to want to answer it. Who, do, who thinks that they're flying by the seat of their pants? Hands up. In terms of cash flow from month to month and monitoring their KPIs. Hands up. Nobody. So you're all on top of cash flow. You don't need to be here. Okay. So here's the thing, right? I'm going to give you some KPIs that may be interesting to you. The first one is called net cash balance. Net cash balance is basically the opening cash that you have at the beginning of the period. You add to that your cash coming in and you take away the cash expected going out. Pretty obvious, right? Now, um, the thing about that is, even though it's a very basic estimate of your financial position, what it's going to do is allow you to, if you can see a shortfall, anticipate that and make corrections accordingly. The next one is net sales. Again, very obvious. But what if I was to say to you that your net sales doubled this year compared to last year, but your expenses went up by 300%? Would that be a problem? That would be a signal that something's going wrong, okay? So your net sales, which is basically your income on your P&L, less your returns, less allowances, less refunds and so forth. And we use this in other calculations such as working out profit margins, okay? So 
This is a very good KPI. It's called operating cash flow margin. And it is the cash flow divided by the net sales which we just went through, okay? Here's the kicker. Now, on your handout, you've actually got a copy of this. This is the equation for net variable cash flow, how to calculate it, okay? Now, I'm going to go through this. This is the centerpiece of today's session, and it's a little bit complicated. So, I'm not going to talk too much about marginal cash flow because that can confuse the issue. Suffice to say that marginal cash flow is the cash which is derived ordinarily from your sales processes. The better KPI to monitor in your business is putting all of that into the calculator and seeing whether you've got a positive answer or a negative answer. If you have negative net variable cash flow, you will be relying upon your cash reserves and pulling money from somewhere. And you may have heard of these expressions before. Who's heard of burn rate or runway? Anyone heard of those expressions? Yeah? OK. So if that's negative, you'll be burning through your cash reserves. It's like an airplane taking off down the runway where there's a finite distance and time frame before they will reach, hopefully, net positive cash flow. OK, so let's just go through some analysis of this. Let's imagine that you have a 10% net variable cash flow negative, which means that for every $100, you've got to find $10 to keep on operating your business. In that situation, is it reasonable to say it's unlikely that the priority is going to be trying to go and find more customers. Is that reasonable? What you're going to do is try and work out how you can improve your cash flow by looking at the variables which are relevant. Now, you might like to write this down. In terms of working capital, you need to treat those as essentially unofficial bank accounts in the same way that you would any other bank account. And ideally, what you would do is try and keep your receivables as low as possible and your inventory as low as possible. And of course, keep your accounts payable within a range which is acceptable to those which are giving you credit. This is the idea. The problem is that if all three of those were to rise within a financial period, that's a double jeopardy because it means you're going to run out of cash and you're going to be paying a hell of a lot of tax. Okay, So just bear that in mind and um, I can take some questions around this at the end. So here's the things that you're going to look at. Most importantly, if you've got a net, negative net variable cash flow. Okay, Work on the margins, improve your prices for example. Uh, you're going to obviously reduce your inventory, your accounts and payable, like I said before, slow down your payables. And ultimately, you're going to be reducing your expenses. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment when we go back to the other calculator. So on your handout, there's at the bottom of that page, you've got, if you just turn that page over, you'll see the green uh, section at the bottom. That is an example. We call that a growth chart. And in that growth chart, there's a bunch of strategies now, it's not complete, of course, because we have hundreds and hundreds of strategies that won't fit on the page. I've just put a few there that will allow you to focus on in order to improve your cash flow. Okay? You've actually got that in your handout already. If you want to take a photo, you can. So, this, these strategies that you choose in order to improve your cash flow are going to be with respect to your business. You can't just go there and say, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You've got to pick out what's relevant to your business. Okay? So, positive net variable cash flow. If it's positive, that's fantastic. That means that you've got the money to go and put into generating more leads and so forth. And if you were to uh, look at the strategies, you've got a summary there again of those cash positive strategies. Um, quick question, who's doing cash flow forecasting? Hands up, please. Who's doing them every three months? Hands up. Who's doing them every one month? Hands up. Keep your hand up. Every week, three months out, hands up. Okay, that's the idea. Every week, three months out minimum, and make sure that your cash flow forecasts 
includes your opening and closing bank balances. That's most important, otherwise you won't lo you're going to lose track. Okay, so reducing your overheads. Number one thing I would be recommending to you to look at is outsourcing. And of course, I'm not talking about just lowering electricity costs and getting a cheaper internet provider. Let's put some numbers around that now. If you look at the calculator, we've gone from with a 10% improvement on those variables from 23 on the bottom to $176,000. That's the impact of only 10% improvements, okay? So, um, think about how you can leverage this in your business in terms of other income streams, your IP, starting online courses, whatever you can do to add other income to your business without having to spend a fortune in infrastructure. Okay, so summing up, um, I'm imagining, imagining that there's some people in the audience here that are looking for funding. Now we do that ourselves at Invest. we also invest in businesses, um, but so do plenty of other people out there. We've got an incubator and so forth based in Kingsgrove. But if you are wanting to become investable, let me tell you that investors will look at two things above everything else, and that's you, whether you are a no-like-trust type of person. Now, tomorrow, over in the pitch room, I'm running a second session which follows on from this session. At 1.30, I'll be hosting the pitch room on the other side of the hall from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. If you want to come to that, you're more than welcome. I think they're allowed to come, are they? I will have to find out for you because it's a smaller hall than this one. But maybe you can just stand at the back if uh, there's no seats left. But here's the thing, right? As investors, what do we look for? We look at how you manage your cash flow, how you manage your numbers. Are you on top of your KPIs? Okay, so in terms of what I wanted to say to you, that's pretty much it. And um, I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. Tyler, would you like to come up the front? Uh, any questions? Sorry about the, uh, the hiccup in the beginning there. Uh, this is Tyler, by the way. Tyler is the uh, co-author of Business Success for Life. And um, that's a really cool book, which came out today. That's the fourth edition.